Hey guys, and a happy Halloween to you all. This is uh, Super Cauldron on the uh, Amstrad CPC long plane review. And um, I've been meaning to do this game for a very, very long time. And uh, especially because it's uh, one of the uh, most impressive looking games on the Amstrad. And it's also from Elmer Krieger, the guy behind Prehistoric 2, another amazing game. Um, you can see a long play of that on my channel from a few months back. And this is one of the uh, very last commercially released games on the Amstrad. Um, released in, uh, I think it was 1993 from Titus Software. And it's kind of an official sequel to uh, Cauldron 1 and 2. So it's been called Cauldron 3. It's now Super Cauldron. Uh, obviously, Titus Software picked up the license from their defunct Palace Software. There's a very lovely looking uh, title screen here. There's some funky music. And some very clever effects on the go here as well, guys. Um, it's perhaps hard to tell watching this on YouTube. Uh, it may not be obvious, but uh, it's using Overscan here for the picture and uh, sprites. Overscan is using the border, you know, the uh, flashing border you normally get when you load in from cassette. And it's very, very difficult to. Uh, program uh, graphics into the border, let alone moving sprites that you can control, so very impressive. Anyway, as I was saying, it's, I've wanted to do this game for a very, very long time, and there's uh, a few reasons why I haven't got around to it. I have tried, uh, have looked at it over time. Uh, firstly, the game is really, really difficult, and there's lots of different hidden areas to look at and find. Uh, and secondly, I have tried recording this before and I got fed up because unfortunately on the uh, Vira emulation there's quite a few uh, sound issues and uh, it would make the video sort of not very enjoyable to watch. Um, but um, I've taken a bit of time and uh, done a few edits here and there just to so, uh, just not interrupt the uh, flow of the gameplay. And uh, yeah, well, I'm going to be doing this in a few parts. Uh, this video, we're just looking at the first level. And the first level in itself, uh, I mean, we've got a video length here of about 32 minutes. Cut off the uh, intro here, and uh, you know, it's 20 25 minutes just for the first level. And there's four levels in total, or four worlds, um, slightly less worlds, um, and a few less hidden areas than the. Uh, PC and uh, Amiga versions, but uh, there's absolutely plenty of stuff crammed into this disc, and it also comes on a cassette as well for 64k memory users. Although I wouldn't recommend it, there must be an awful lot of loading involved. So yeah, very very tough game, and uh, it's taken me uh, quite a bit of time to work out the best route, um, where all the hidden places are, and things you need to find. I can't uh, actually find any instructions in uh, English, unfortunately. So I've kind of been working blind on this, and uh, so that's kind of the reason why I haven't really sort of got around to this a lot a lot sooner. But hey, you guys, seeing as it's Halloween, you know, um, this is sort of a uh, Halloweeny type <laughs> game. Oh, it's actually really, really cutesy. It's not very scary at all. Not that most uh, computer games in this era were. Certainly, the witch you can uh, you control uh, Zamira, I believe her name is, according to the box art. She's a very cute looking witch. Uh, what's on the back of the box say? Help Zamira, the friendly witch, find her lost magic powers in a world haunted by jumping pumpkins, spitting gargoyles, slimy bats, and many other bewitched creatures. Search for the source of evil and free the kingdom from darkness. Restore life and happiness to the people of this land. Save the creatures of the forest from the demon's curse. Super Cauldron is a cute action adventure game full of surprises. Yeah, nothing much to report there. Basically, uh, you, you control the witch Zamira. You got to find all her spells, find a key, um, find the door to the end of level guardian, destroy the guardian, move on. Simple as that. And here we go. Nice introduction as you come out of the mouth of an alligator, and wee, you can slide on a bomb down hills. 
nice little touches like that. But the graphics are absolutely fantastic. And some really nice effects going on in the background, like lightning effects there on this area of the game. And here's our first hidden area. Might as well go there first. And in this hidden area, there's a uh, special sort of spell and weapon to pick up, which is really useful against the end of level guardian. Which is that thing just there, or just just dropped by it. Oops! But you can pick up a broomstick and fly through the air rather awesomely. There it is. That's what I need to pick up. And it's like a spinning saw blade disc that sort of buzzes around the floor. And you'll need this and uh, for the end of level guardian. So save that and save it to the end. There's a cute little witch's mirror there. You can see her in action a bit closer. Ah, oh, some really nice sprites in this game. And basically guys, what we need to do is find uh, the different levels and hidden areas of this world. In each area there's a spell to collect which will be useful and needed in your quest. And in this forest world, um, the areas are underneath uh, basically tree stumps. So just the left here, I'm just working out which one to go for. Actually to the right, oops. <laughs> And there you go. Just go to, find, find, go to the tree stump, press the down key, and you get warped to see that um, area. Now watch out for those owls. You can attack them at distance, but they'll fly and zoom and home in on you. Every uh, enemy you uh, destroy leaves behind a frog to collect. Because I was sort of like feeling my way through the game, um, I didn't realise the frogs replenish your uh, spells. And uh, I think we open up our uh, spell book here in a second. I'm just going to get rid of that owl first. You can't destroy those pumpkin heads though. Right, I think, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's have a look at our spell book. Okay, so you can select your spell there and it shows you uh, how many keys you've got and stuff. You can see we've got that saw blade weapon there. And you can check on the uh, levels of your uh, spell strength, weapon strength or whatever. And uh, if you're running low, collect frogs accordingly. I didn't work that out till later on in this level actually, so apologies for that. all these little critters here. Now I've played this through uh, quite a few times before over the, over, over the years and uh, I've done the first level um, but I'm just trying to remember where to go here. Sorry guys, I actually need to get up the top there. I'm just trying to lure that owl away but he's not leaving me alone little bastard. Got him. I'm going to try and conserve as many, as much energy and uh, lives as possible. The energy is represented by uh, the two sort of like red uh, jars and vials next to your life's count on the status bar on the bottom towards the right and to the right of your score. When both are gone, uh, you die and lose a life, and you have to start the area you're on again. And the big long red bar uh, to the left of the score, that's your uh, weapon strength or spell strength. And by default, sorry guys, yeah, you have uh, basically just like a stone weapon, which you'll see in action here. Very basic. It does the job. Oh, sorry guys. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on that last area, you need to get a broomstick so you can fly all the way across back to the start. And above you is a uh, teleportation spell. I think it was. I think it was the teleportation spell. Am I? Uh Yes, it was a teleportation spell. Ah, yes, uh, that's a 
this spell here you're collecting, that's a sort of a fire sort of, well shoots out sort of fiery rockets that do more damage. Can be quite awkward shooting of those uh, little stones and rocks because they sort of arc and uh, you've got to time it right if you wear uh, strength. Um, strength of weapon is that sort of um, black bar just above the big red bar. The longer you hold down the fire button, the further your weapon shoots. Or oh, there's the teleportation spell in action. I thought I'd just use that to sneak past those pumpkins because it'd be quite a pain to time it right. Oh, I love the uh, background there. Sort of the uh, fiery. Uh, oh, very atmospheric. I like that a lot. This one's. Uh, this level's all about timing jumps. Probably squeeze through there, but if uh, patience uh, is required, there you go. You can jump through about now. Now they've uh, lined up. Oh, there's a snake there. Get rid of him quick with a fiery rocket. He's a goner. You'll come up to another snake shortly, and he's a real swine to get rid of. And you'll see why shortly. And just be patient again. Now, don't do a running jump over those next two uh, flames. Just standing jump. And you'll clear them. Right, the snake's a bit of a git. You need to jump, across, jump out a little bit, and then fire your stones. You can only kill him whilst he's um, standing up, not ducking down. He's awkward because he'll uh, shoot flames out onto the uh, ledge there. Some very cool enemies in this game, definitely. Some good, uh, good game design here. This is very, very impressive on the Amstrad. Uh, per perhaps less so on the uh, Mega and PC, which uh, you can see. Uh, I think there's videos of long plays of the uh, Mega version on YouTube and the Cubex 55s channel. Now, a little bug here: the screen hasn't scrolled across like it should have done. Um, and you'll see a little platform to the right. Um, so I've done a little bit of leap of faith there and used the teleportation spell rather skillfully there, might, might I add? And that's got me across there. So uh, I like how you you need to sometimes be sometimes think and uh, choose the right spell to clear a certain area and get past things. For example, the spell we're going to collect on this level is uh, basically bombs, fire bomb, and it's on a certain timer. And you will find out later on that you can use the bomb to clear certain areas to access um, higher areas and stuff like that. So it's just not not just a uh, you know standard platforming game with a bit of shoot 'em up. There's a bit of um, you know a bit of thinking involved. Right, these pumpkins are easy to jump. They're going down, so we'll just jump on the tree stumps there. Give them an extra extra bit of height. Now there should be an owl and a guy shooting rockets at you. Here's the owl. Get the fire spell ready. Hopefully we'll shoot first before he does. Oof! Yep, that was close. And uh, try and remember if you do kill enemies to pick up frogs. Um, but for, but select the weapon that's got least amount of power left first. Unlike what I've done for most of this level, I won't be doing that later on in the in the next levels and parts. But yeah, guys, I thought I'd do this in uh, parts this time instead of um, you know doing the full long play. Because I've been meaning to do this for such a long time. It is a tough game, and I've I've gone back to it time and time again, and just got fed up and. Uh, you know, forgotten about it. So, I don't know, I guess it'd be kind of fun. You can look forward to uh, wait wait and see on the uh, next part, you know, what to, what to look forward to and stuff. And uh, it's a bit of an incentive for me to actually finish this game. 
not actually really looked at the second level yet, so um, it'll be interesting for me as well. Right, the next area we need to go um, is in that water there. So you just uh, press down and you jump into the water. And then uh, move into quite a big area this one. Lots of, uh, lots of platforming action in this one actually. Timing jumps and uh, sort of moving platforms and lifts. And a hidden area to find. Should probably leave this area to last because there's quite a few sort of energy pickups unlike the other areas there's there's one that will restore my energy but I've got full energy at the moment oh we've got about those two owls Uh, perhaps a little bug here. Um, appears my hits are not registering. Oh, okay. Perhaps they were. I think these cavemen take a few stones. Bear with me whilst I dispatch them. There we go. Now at the time uh, this came out, which is 1993, as I was saying, this is perhaps one of the very, very last commercially released games uh, for the Amstrad. The next one being uh, Prehistoric 2, also from Titus Software and the same programmer, Elmer Krieger. Very, very impressive game. If you haven't watched the long play my channel, guys, and you're liking this, go and watch Prehistoric 2 because it's even more impressive. And it has a version for the uh, Amstrad Plus machines as well, which looks absolutely fantastic. It looks even better, actually. But Amstrad Action Magazine at the time, they gave this, uh, gave Super Cauldron a whopping 96%. Uh, so this is one of the highest rated games on the Amstrad. Um, if uh, you're not familiar with the Amstrad, you kind of just stumbled across this video. You know, perhaps might not be impressed for a game from 1993, but if you think, uh, if you want, you know, you should really take a look at the other sort of games available for the Amstrad, other platforming games, and just see how they compare. It's a machine, you know, from 1984, designed and built probably around 82, 83. So it's a 10-year-old machine, uh, the Amstrad, when this game came out. You know, um, if you want to compare platforming games on the Amstrad, you know, take a look at Roland on the Ropes in my channel and then compare it to this one. And you'll just see how far the Amstrad had moved on and what it was capable of doing. And what for the large, a large part of Amstrad's life uh, we had to put up with. A lot of very, very bad, dodgy platform games with very, very poor scrolling usually spect spectrum ports and here they've managed um, managed some smooth scrolling it does sometimes get a little bit sort of uh, rough occasionally and there's a bit of sprite flicker but we've basically got a full screen game using overscanning to the borders with some fantastic looking sprites very little slowdown And lots of nice touches. Like you can see, like the water sort of rippling there below me as well. Okay, guys, uh, this is the key we need to pick up here, so we can get to the uh, final guardian. Use your bombs to clear the wall, but be warned, the bombs can kill you, <laughs> and they run out very quickly. So uh, this is the first time I've used the bombs, so I was just getting used to them there. So we need to pick up a few frogs to restore our bomb supply, which I realise we're running very low on, round about now. But there's a key we need to pick up. So we'll just use our stones from distance, it takes a bit of time. But yeah, as I said in the Prehistoric 2 video, it's such a shame that programmer Elmer Krieger 
uh, I wasn't around a lot earlier in the Amstrad's life because we could have seen some truly fantastic games from him. Sadly, all we've got is um, Super Cauldron and Prehistoric 2, just basically two games. Never mind. To me, um, the, 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 the this and Prehistoric 2 are two of the best ever games on the Amstrad. Although, as I said earlier, and to be honest, I'm never progressed further than level one. Oh, well, sorry, the start of level two on this game. It is really quite tough. Okay, we're just uh, trying to kill a few enemies here just to pick up some more frogs for the bombs. Now I'm gonna kill that caveman. I think it might be worth risking a bit of losing a bit of energy just to kill him and get the frog for the bombs. Let's hope he'll bounce off and uh, land on his head. Sod it. There's plenty of energy pickups. In fact, the bombs clear the way for energy pickups. But I don't want to try and show you all the uh, secret and hidden areas. And uh, if any of you have played this game before and, and uh, you know, uh, got through this level and uh, know of any of the secret areas I've missed, do let me know. Oh, cripes, running really low on energy now. Okay, another uh, vial pickup there for energy. Nice. And we're at the end of this section now. But there is a hidden area there to the left. And uh, yeah, use your bombs to uh, clear away. There you go. There's a here. hidden pick up there, lovely. Strangely, the walls reappeared there, <laughs> which we'd just blown up. Ah well, little minor gripe there. And uh, right, I think we can now go to the final section of this world and uh, take on the end of level guardian. being able to pick up a broomstick and fly. It's like the original cauldron actually. Right here we go, right this is the final part of uh, World 1. Just get rid of these schools um, which will reveal a couple of useful frog pickups to restore our uh, spell energy. So obviously running quite low on those bombs. Now this is a bit of, um, can be a bit of a tricky cave system. This there's uh, certainly a few um, um, instant deaths from spikes and stuff, and falling sections of the ceilings, and yeah. So be really careful on this. Don't need to kill these. We can, j we can just drop straight down. But I want to just get a few more frogs for my bombs. Use a teleportation spell there to jump across. Frankly, it doesn't take too much power when you use it. Quite handy. Oh, yeah, we need some more power for our fire rockets. Okay. There's no way to pass this section unless you get the teleportation spell, which is why you do need to go to each and every area. You can't just run straight to that previous area I was at and get the uh, key. Of course, because you'll need the bomb to get to the key and blow the blow a section away. Another 
hear occasional bleep in the background. That's me pausing the game on the emulator for some reason. It just uh, produces some weird sound. Anything slightly disappointing for me is no music in game, and uh, the sound effects are mm, they're okay. They're slightly dis they're, they're they're disappointing really. Some of them are alright, but it's just lots of nasty crunching noises all the time. It starts to get on your nerves a bit. Could have done with some really spooky or jangly kind of music to go with the game. It is a, it is a platforming romp. But hey, if, uh, if music would have slowed the game down, um, I'd rather do that music, so that's fine by me if that was the case. Yeah, I lost a bit of energy there, but it's just worth doing. Um, you need to get rid of that guy, otherwise he'll keep chucking bowling balls at you. Yep, got to bomb your way through here, of course. The reason I've just gone back there is I want to make sure I get a bomb right on top of that section. Oh yeah, the longer you hold on the fire button down on those bombs, it won't increase the length but of how far you throw them, but uh, it will it'll increase the length of time before they explode. Handy tip there for you. I think we can just, oops, duck when he shoots. I will just kill him from distance. If anyone does have the English uh, instruction manual for this game, I'll be interested to uh, uh, know if you have. Um, perhaps I can sort out getting scans done of it or whatever. And uh, this is uh, also one of the rarest games on the Amstrad. I think I've only ever seen this game once on eBay, um, and that was just the loose disc, not without, and that was without the box and uh, instructions, sadly. So I've been looking out for this game for a long time to purchase. I do have the Prehistoric 2 big box, but I was absolutely kicking myself um, that I didn't at the time go and order uh, Super Cauldron. I think I was waiting for Prehistoric 2 because that was slightly more hyped than this one. And by the time I came around to order Super Cauldron, nowhere, nowhere was stocking it from mail order. Oh, there's a door there to the right, a portal. Don't go through it because that'll warp you right to the back, uh, right back to the start. Okay, just trying to remember where I need to go. It's safe to drop. Oops. That's a bit of energy there, but we're, clo we're close to the end. Oh yeah, and I forgot to get frogs for my uh, final weapon, the uh, buzzsawry type thing, which I collected first from that hidden uh, thing in the sky. Oops. But you can actually kill these uh, snapping plants with your rocks. I'm just going to slip my weapon to pick up a frog. There you go, it increases the energy of that weapon and spell. Oops. Oh. Sometimes it can be a little bit awkward jumping on things like uh, those uh, chains and ladders and on certain platforms. Um, the only other thing that lets this game down is sometimes the controls are a little bit are a little bit stodgy sometimes, and uh, I could say in jumping onto oops, jumping onto ladders and uh, chains and stuff can be a little bit awkward. I've only got some minor criticisms of this game really, oh, I really enjoyed doing this, uh, it was quite frustrating, it's quite hard, and 
it's a really big game. I mean, this first level is nearly 30 minutes long. Um, quite impressive stuff, really. And I've uh, got through this pretty quickly. Yeah, it's all about timing there. Get past those schools. But we're very close to the door we need to go through to fight the evil uh, end of level guardian. And uh, I forget, I don't know, actually know what you're actually supposed to be retrieving, but I think it's a special spell book. And I guess once you've got all the spell books, you can uh, fight the, the final guardian at the end of the game. Watch out, there's a falling uh, stalagmite or whatever you call it, just above that chain there. But you can dodge to the right if needs be. Uh, oop, there it is. And there's the doorway, right. So yeah, we end up in a very, very small room, fighting a very, very nasty uh, baddie. So I immediately set your uh, buzzsaw thingy weapon and then very quickly select your bombs and uh, blow a hole in the wall quickly whilst you're temporarily inv invulnerable from being hit previous okay and we can stand on that table and basically just fire off loads of those weapons even though they've run out there you don't lose the weapon, you can still continue using it just as long as you don't change to another weapon and then you've lost that spell but thankfully he turns into a frog, so we can pick up that frog. We've got the book um, book of spells there from the altar. And then on to level 2. So, thanks for watching guys. And I uh, hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you on part 2 and level 2. Cheers.